So conventional Yu-Gi-Oh! Wisdom tells us that you're supposed to run 40 cards, as few cards as possible in your deck so that you can see your best cards quickly and frequently. But is that actually the wrong thing to do? Alright, so I wasn't lying before. In Yu-Gi-Oh! you're pretty much supposed to run as few cards as possible. I mean, we've seen people run Upstart Goblin when it was at 3 just for the sake of trimming their deck down as much as possible. The idea of deck thinning is good, you know, that's why people run draw cards, and that's why you want these cards that search, you know, cards like Reinforcement of the Army or Heretic Seal. But, um, two recent card releases kind of have me questioning it. Now don't get me wrong, I guess what I'm really trying to say isn't that like you just should drop everything and run like 60 cards in every deck. It's more of a change in mindset and something that I think Konami might actually be doing to challenge us. So these two cards are Pot of Desires and That Grass Looks Greener. So um, we'll start with Pot of Desires since it's been around for much longer and uh, it's probably the more popular card. So Pot of Desires has you banishing the top 10 cards of your deck face down. And uh, in exchange, you know, you get basically Pot of Greed, just draw two cards. The thing is, though, um, to compensate for Pot of Desires, a lot of players have kind of taken different approaches. There are some decks where, you know, you're able to get the cards back, like using Cypher and Lord Omega, or even if you're really kooky and crazy, Necroface. Um, and then some people only really run, like, two copies of the card, because they don't want to run, like, open multiples. But um, what I've seen in a lot of decks is running something like 45 cards, um or even 50 cards, I've even seen it run in like 60 card decks, and the reason being is so that, you know, when you're milling off these cards with Pot of Desires, you're not bringing yourself uncomfortably close to decking out. But that could be a bit flawed though, couldn't it? Because you're running Pot of Desires for the sake of consistency, and for the sake of seeing draw power and getting to your combo pieces quickly. So why would you run more than 40 cards in that case? And I think that the really interesting conundrum here is that Konami's kind of created this scenario where you can't really have the best of both worlds. We all know that Pot of Greed is a broken card, and you know, like, no one's really questioning that. Obviously, it needed to be banned. So, in its place, we get this card that really kind of forces us to make a choice. How valuable are those 10 cards to you? And, you know, how valuable is that extra consistency in your deck? Are you, you know, willing to lose 10 cards, bring yourself closer to milling? There have been loads of debates about the thing, but I think. I guess maybe the bigger picture I'm getting towards is that Konami isn't leaving us with an easy choice. I like Pot of Desires because it's contentious. It's not an instant add-in in every deck. It means like, huh, like, is this worth it to me? I'm not sure. Do I want to run more than 40 cards so that I don't lose so many cards? But then if I run more than 40 cards, then I'm making my deck less consistent, and maybe that means I won't even see the Pot of Desires that I'm running for the same reason that I'm running more than 40 cards. And so if you get my drift here, it just kind of sounds like we're in this sort of between a rock and a hard place. Now, most people will tell you it's just worth it to run Desires, and they're usually right, but I think that that's a really cool design concept, a cool balancing aspect. Um, yeah, so the next card, though, is That Grass Looks Greener, which is, in my opinion, a more extreme case of this. Uh, that Grass Looks Greener is awesome. You know, you send cards from the top of your deck to the grave until you have the same amount of cards in your deck as your opponent. But, in order for that to really be meaningful, you have to run usually about 60 cards. I mean, you could run maybe 50 or 55, but usually you'd have to run 60 cards. And that way, you know, your opponent's running 40, you're running 60, and whenever you activate that grass, you'll be milling about, you know, roughly 20 cards or so. And that could be loads of zombie cards, loads of light swords, you know, whatever you need to get in the grave, infernoids. Um, I actually made a video about some cool decks you could use that grass looks greener in, <laughs> forgot the name of it. Yeah, check that video out, I'll have it linked. But more importantly though, um, this card really kind of challenges us though. Like, do we run 60 cards for the sake of using this and getting a huge advantage? But then like what I was saying with Desires, if you're running 60 cards, then how are you gonna see this frequently? Because you know, you're running 40 normally so that you see these cards fast, but then you wanna see this particular card because it sends 20 cards, but to run it, you have to run 60, which means you're losing consistency and it's just kinda like, what's the right choice here? Um, and most people will tell you, well, you know, you just run it anyway, it's worth it. But uh, I, again, like that design concept, that aspect of balance, where there isn't a right or wrong answer. Um, obviously, in a deck like Infernoids, that's probably gonna, it's probably just gonna be a yes. You're just gonna run your Grass Looks Greener with, like, left arm offering, hoping to see it fast, and the, like, you know, return outweighs the cost. But what about in maybe your average deck that may want to run, you know, that Grass Looks Greener, is it worth it to go up to 60 cards 
or a card that you know will give you a huge huge advantage and open up lots of plays but you may not actually see because you're running 60 cards do you get my picture here i like it i think that konami has done a great job with these recent card designs neither of them are like instant inclusions but they are both very powerful very useful card effects um and you know in the past we've seen actually 60 card decks i remember i mean we've seen them a lot like there's been like monster mash variants for a while some some of them had more than like 40 cards Light Swords in the past have sometimes run like 45. I remember Mermails um, for a while when they were first released could run as many as like, you know, 57 cards or something, some build top with like that many. Um, I even seen like a Fire Ice hybrid. It was like Mermails and Fire Fist. And then I've seen like Burning Abyss Shadals and like that would run like 60 cards because they just would all float and they're all dark and there was lots of synergy there. But really, I guess what I'm getting at is, um, is the conventional 40 card deck limit being flipped on its head a little bit? Uh, and is that a good or a bad thing? So this wasn't meant to, I guess, be like a super conclusive discussion. I'm not going to tell you to go run 60 cards and everything and just toss in that grass or toss in desires. But I just want to know what you guys think. Do you think this is a good sort of change in direction that Konami's taking with these new cards where they're strong, but the drawbacks are kind of implicit with deck building? Or is it just kind of like, hey, if your deck needs it, you run it. If you don't need it, you don't run it. There's not much more to say. Um, leave your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to know. And also, you know, be sure to check out my That Grass video. And I think it's going to be it. Sponsor stuff in the description. Uh, social media stuff in the description. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you loved it. And I think it's going to be it. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.